Hello everyone, welcome back to Planet Linux. You'll find that many computers today come with two storage drives. The first drive is a smaller yet faster solid state drive where the operating system, everything that your computer runs, is stored on. This makes sure that everything you do on your computer is very responsive and fast. Then there's a second larger yet often slower and less expensive, mechanical hard drive. The thinking here is that this drive is a large amount of space where you can store all of your personal files, like documents, games, videos, etc. However, many computers don't come with this set up by default. Instead, putting all of your files with the operating system on the smaller drive and not utilizing the large one at all. Fortunately, this setup is quite easy to do on Linux, as the majority of your personal files and folders are stored within a home folder. I'll start by showing you how to set this up on a new Linux installation, so that the operating system is installed to the smaller SSD, and your home folder and all of your files are on the larger storage drive. And then I'll show you what to do if you already have Linux installed on your computer and you want to move all of your existing files over to a larger storage drive. So today I'll be showing this process in Ubuntu, and the process is nearly identical for any distribution based on Ubuntu, such as Linux Mint, Elementary OS, etc. While the process may vary ever so slightly, this guide can also be applied to nearly any other Linux distribution as well. So to get started, when you're installing your Linux distribution, go through the first couple steps of the installer until it asks where you want to install. Make sure that you click Custom, or in the case of Ubuntu here, something else, because we need to manually configure a couple things. Here's the custom partitioning screen that lets us control what gets installed onto which disk. As you can see, we have two disks in this system, SDA, which is approximately 34 gigabytes, and SDB, which is a larger 138 gigabyte disk. What we're going to do is install the operating system onto our smaller disk, and then put all of our personal files onto the larger disk. So we need to create a couple partitions, which are basically blocks of space on the drive. First, we'll locate our smaller disk where we want the operating system to go and select the free space. Then we'll click plus to add a new partition. And this first partition is going to be an EFI system partition. This is basically a small amount of space at the beginning of the disk where all of the computer's firmware and system settings are stored. Not every computer needs this, but most computers made in the last 10 years do. And this only needs to be about 500 megabytes. Uh, it's very small, it doesn't take up much space. So we'll set this to be 500 megabytes. It will be a primary partition. We want this space to begin using it at the beginning of the disk space. And under Use As, we're going to make this an EFI system partition. Then we'll click OK. And now it shows our first partition that we created here. Now we'll click on the remaining free space after it for this smaller drive, and we'll create another partition. We'll have this use all of the remaining disk space. It's once again a primary partition, at the beginning of this available space. For use as, in most cases, you can use the ext4 file system that's selected here by default. If you know what you're doing, you can use the btrfs file system or some of the others here, as there are advantages and disadvantages to each, but for most users, ext4 will work just fine. The most important part here is the mount point. We need to make sure to set the mount point to slash. This is the root highest level of the operating system, and all of the system files are located underneath of slash, or the root. So by setting the mount point to slash, this makes sure that everything in the operating system is installed onto this disk. 
Now, on our second larger disk, we'll select the free space, and this is where we want all of our personal files to go, which in Linux are inside of our home folder. So we'll create a partition in this free space. We'll let it use the entire space of the drive. Again, it's primary at the beginning of the disk space. Again, we'll use the ext4 file system, but we want to make sure to mount this at slash home. This makes sure that our home folder is the only thing that goes onto this larger disk. Now, here's our final setup. As you can see, our first disk has the EFI firmware partition and where all of our operating system goes. And then our smaller, or excuse me, our larger disk here has our home folder where all of our personal files would be. Now, if you're using another distribution besides Ubuntu, or anything that's based off of it, like Linux Mint, then you may also need to add a swap partition on your first system disk. This is a small amount of space that is reserved for anything your computer is doing. If it runs low on memory, it will temporarily swap some of the memory over onto your hard disk. Ubuntu doesn't need this, as it creates a temporary file for such things. But if you're using a different distribution besides Ubuntu or Linux Mint, among a few others, you may see something telling you that you need a swap partition. So you would reserve a small amount of space, usually about the amount of RAM or memory that your system has, and create another partition on this smaller disk for swap space. That would simply be marked as a swap area here in the partition creator. But for Ubuntu, recent versions of Ubuntu and Linux Mint and anything based off of them, we don't need that. As for where we're putting the bootloader, that's going to go on our main disk where the operating system is installed, which in this case is the smaller one. So from here, we'll continue, we'll make sure to select slash for our operating system to install to here on the smaller disk. And we'll click Install Now and let this continue with its installation. I'll finish completing these install steps and I'll show you what we've got once this is finished. So now that the installation has just finished and we've restarted the computer, we can go into the disks program And we can see our two drives over here on the left. We have the smaller drive here that has the EFI system partition we created, and then our main operating system partition. And then on our larger disk, we have just our single large home partition where all of our files, our personal files go. And if we take a look in the file browser, that essentially means that all of these folders here our personal folders, documents, downloads, etc., go onto the larger storage drive. And in fact, if we go up one level, we can see here is our user folder, and then that is inside of the home directory. So these are all the files and folders of the operating system, and this home folder is the single one that is stored on the larger disk. So every time that you store something inside of your home folder, which is really inside of home, and then your user, inside of any of these folders or any other files here, this will automatically store on the larger drive. All right, now we're going to switch gears and take a look at an Ubuntu system that has already been installed. The system, everything including the home folder, was installed onto one disk, standard installation and now we want to move our existing files over to a secondary disk without having to reinstall the system. As you can see here, we have on our primary disk our EFI system partition, and then the operating system itself with everything, including our home folder. Our secondary disk here is completely empty. The home folder isn't on this. The process for migrating our existing home folder over to our secondary drive can be done a couple of different ways. Arguably the fastest is by using the terminal and running some commands. However, for the sake of this video, 
I want to make this process as familiar as possible for all users, including those that may not be familiar with the terminal. While we will enter some terminal commands throughout this process, I'll be attempting to use graphical utilities whenever it's reasonable to do so, so that people that aren't familiar with the terminal are more aware of what they're following along with. So to start, we need to create the partition that our home folder is going to go onto on the second drive. And for this, we'll use a utility called gparted. We'll need to download this from our software center. So if you open that up and search for gparted, here we go. We will install this, enter our password to authenticate. Now that this is installed, we will go into our Applications menu and launch gparted. It asks for our password, and here we are. So by default, this is showing the drive that the operating system itself is installed on. And it shows the same two partitions that we already have set up. However, we'll go to this drop-down menu at the top right, and here we see our second drive. Notes the name of the second drive, slash dev slash, in this case, sdb. Note what it is on your system, as we will need to use this name later. So we'll click on this to switch over to that drive, and we have a bunch of unallocated space. So here's what we'll be creating our partition. Right click on this unallocated space, and click New. If you receive an error saying that it can't be created, then go up to Device and click Create Partition Table. In this case, we'll click New. We want this partition to take up the entire drive, so we'll have it go from the very beginning to the very end of the drive. It will be a primary partition set up as ext4. We really want this to be the same as whatever the operating system is installed as, so by default, it would be ext4. But if you installed your Linux distribution with a different file system, you'll want this to match. And then we can set the label to something that represents what we're using it for, such as files or data. And then we'll click Add. Now, it's previewing our changes here, but it hasn't written them to the disk yet. So we'll go up to this green tick mark to apply our changes. And we'll confirm that. And now the partition has actually been created. I will leave this off to the side for now, as we won't need it for a little while. And the next thing we're going to need to do is mount that partition that we just created onto the system so that we can work with it. For this, we will need to use the terminal, which you can either open from your Applications menu, or in most distributions, you can press Control-Alt-T or the super key plus T to open. By mounting the drive, we are essentially placing the contents of that drive in a certain location on the system so that we can access it. For the sake of this, if we take a look in our file browser, there is a location on the root of our system called MNT. This is a temporary location where devices can be mounted. As you can see, there's nothing here right now. So this will be a perfect location for us to mount this. So now we need to note the name of our partition we created. It's slash dev slash sdb1. That means it's the first partition on our device, sdb. So we're going to enter this command, sudo, which stands for super user do, because we need administrative privileges to do this, and then mount, and then the name of the partition, slash dev slash sdb1, space, and then the location we want to mount it, in this case, the MNT folder under the root of the system, so slash MNT. Press enter, and enter your password if it prompts, and now it's mounted the drive. So now, we need to copy the contents of our existing home directory over to this new location where we've mounted the new drive. While you could do this through the Graphical File Manager, you would have to open it with root administrative privileges. So it's just easier to do here while we're here in the terminal. 
So to do this, we're going to use the cp or copy command. So again, we'll use sudo to do it with administrative rights. cp for copy. And then we're going to put a dash and then rp. This defines two specific options for the copy command that makes sure it runs recursively, meaning it does all files and folders underneath of the point we specify. And P is to preserve all folder and file structures. And we'll put a space. And we'll say what we want to copy, which is our slash home slash asterisk, which means everything else underneath of our home folder space, and then where we want it to go, which is slash MNT, where we just mounted our larger drive. We'll press enter. And now that's completed. Now if we go into our file manager, and we go to our main root computer, into our mount folder, we now see that we have all of the contents of our home folder in here. So now you'll probably want to uh, move your existing home folder, the original home folder, somewhere else just in case anything goes wrong. Then you have it saved in a backup location in case you need to refer to it again. To do this, we will move our home folder to a new folder we create called Home1. You can name it whatever you'd like though, something that you recognize as your previous home folder. So we're going to do the move command, mv space our home folder slash home. And we're going to move it to a new folder under the root of our directory, so slash, and we're going to call it Home1. You can name this whatever you'd like. Of course, need to do that with sudo. There we go. And now we need to make a new home directory to replace the one that we just moved. To do this, we'll do sudo and then mkdir for make directory slash home. Now that we've recreated an empty home directory, we want to unmount our drive that we created from the slash mnt folder and mount it into the new home folder. So to do this, we'll do sudo umount, which stands for unmount, but there's no n after the u, our partition slash dev slash sdb1, and then we will mount it into our home folder with sudo mount slash dev slash sdb1 space in our home directory slash home. Now before we continue, we can take a look to see if all of our files are moved properly. If we go into our file browser, we see that it opens up to our home folder. And in here it has all of our documents that we had before. And if we right click on our home folder and go to properties, we can see that the free disk space, as I didn't have a whole lot on here, the free disk space is almost the full space of our larger drive now, instead of the smaller one where it was originally located. So now there's really just one last step we have to do here, because as it is, our secondary drive won't mount automatically when we power on the system. So on boot up, our home folder won't be there. So we need to modify one of the files to make sure that it automatically mounts our home folder on the second drive when we boot the system. This is done by editing a file called fstab. As we did before with the home folder, I do recommend making a backup of this file first, just in case something goes wrong, then you can rename the backed up file back to the original if you need to. So to do this, we'll do sudo cp to copy a file. And the file is located under the root of the system, so slash, in the etc folder, slash, and it's called fstab. 
I'm going to space, and then we're going to copy it to slash etc slash fs tab one. So this will make a copy of the file called fs tab one. Now we're going to edit that file. You could do this in your text editor of choice. Uh, for example, Ubuntu, the default text editor is called gedit. However, regardless of what distribution you're using, there's a text editor built directly into the terminal here. It's called nano. So we're going to edit this file, once again with sudo privileges, in the application nano. And then the file is r slash etsy slash fs tab. So there's a few things that we need to enter here, but most of them can be left as defaults. What we need to do is use the arrow to move all the way down to the bottom of the document here. We're going to be adding a new line. So the first thing we need to enter is the name of our partition, which in this case is slash dev slash sdb1. Then we'll press the tab key to move over to the next column. And here we're going to enter the mount point that we want it to go to, which is slash home. And we'll tab again. Next, we need to type the description for the file system, which in this case, and which is usually the default, is ext4. If you've used butterfs, then here you would write btrfs. Excuse me, that is a 4. <laughs> Next, we're going to tab again. And we'll type defaults. This has a preset uh, selection of options for how the drive is mounted. We're going to leave that at their defaults settings. We'll tab again. And then we have to type a zero for the file system dump option. Tab again and press zero again. This will be for the file system check option, which essentially means it will do neither of those things. Now that we're done with this, we'll hit Control X. It asks if we want to save the file. We'll press Y to do so. It asks to confirm the name, which we obviously want to leave it as the same thing. So we'll press Enter, and now it's saved the file. Now at this point, we can reboot our system and see if everything appears as it's supposed to. All right, our system is back up. And if we go into our file browser, as you can see, we have our home folder here with everything in it, as was originally intended. All of our files open properly as expected. And again, if we uh, go into properties for our home folder, we'll see that it is on the larger of the disks. So that just about wraps things up. If you have any concerns or questions, feel free to write them in the video comments, as I do make a point to read all of those and reply to as many as possible. If you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful, I'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, if you want to stay up to date with all the latest content that I'm posting, consider subscribing to the channel and mark the notification bell. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter, at PlanetLinux98. I hope you've enjoyed, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.